Yeah, welcome to, to, to our talk about, or my talk about Yarn at Xing. So probably some of you haven't heard what Xing is, so just a short introduction. So we are, we are a social network for business professionals. Uh, we have around 40 million members and half of them are based in Germany. So that's where, where we are mostly popular. Um, I there work in the, in the data science department and we rebooted the team two years ago. Um, we, we basically ported most of our servers now to, to Hadoop-based solutions. Um, we started off with 020 and uh, in, already in the alpha phase we, we um, switched to, to uh, 2.1, uh, 2.0 based on Yarn. And um, yeah, our, our setup is mainly that we are a consultancy and service team uh, in, inside of the whole company. So before we, we, had, we were just using a, the, a proprietary solution for, for computing all our recommendations and, and, and um, other, other data that we, that we uh, delivered. But yeah, this is going step by step to Hadoop and we're almost finished with that by now. Um, our delivery stack, because that m maybe also uh, explains some decisions we made for, for our YARN-based uh, uh, um, deployment tool that we, that we wrote, is, yeah, we're run running everything on the JVM, but we're mostly using Scala, actually almost exclusively, only in the case where it becomes difficult to shift other libraries, we, uh, we will resort to, to Java, but that's very, very little code. Uh, we were on the type to save stack also, so we're using Play and Akka for, for, for delivery systems. On the data side, of course, mainly, mainly Hadoop, and for, for delivery systems, we, uh, we're using Elasticsearch and also Cassandra. Um, yeah, our main usage for, 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 for Hadoop is actually cheap storage, data warehouse, we processing, uh, we have first, first of all, we also ingest all the platform events and mostly is running nightly jobs. So f for, for recommendations and other data services, we uh, pre-calculate that we have a few hourly jobs, but, but yeah, it's, it's mostly nightly and the old, only daily load we have is, or mostly they are ad hoc jobs uh, and, and, and queries that our data scientists uh, perform. Um, but yeah, that's mostly in the development and analysis phase. So, of course, we have a lot of unused uh, computation capacity on on on, um, on our cluster, and we thought, how we how could we make use of that? So, the different use cases that you can actually address with that. I have to say that our SLA is basically we we want to keep the cluster as, as much as we can out of production because uh, yeah then we it makes it just makes our life easier if the cluster can be down for like one hour or something and and, and, and no one comes screaming so um, that's why we are, were first only considering um, yeah more more lightweight usage of, of this so uh, or or not use it to deliver user-facing uh, content from the cluster. So we are mostly focusing currently on yeah, QA tasks. So, so if you need to dynamically test or uh, test some applications, you can use it to generate load on, on existing uh, deployments. Um, another idea would be, yeah, for example, a big use case actually is using or creating elastic search clusters ad hoc on top of your Hadoop cluster. So um, this this enables the data scientists to have uh, yeah IR based um, um, yeah IR based ways of, of of working with the data, and um, also sometimes uh, we have a bit more interactive evaluations where yeah you just you just have to basically have a, have a program running and then you want to want to query query that so um, there are other things so like one off runs that you can do uh, in, in, in a batch process so like image scaling or, or building search indexes and this is not always uh, easily to press inside of um, a map reduce job so so especially the image scaling it's uh, 
you would be misusing MapReduce for, for, for these kinds of tasks. So we were searching for an easy way to actually, uh, on the one hand, use existing code to run on, run on top of Yarn and to also provide our own programs that can run on top of Yarn. But once you look at the API, the, it is, yeah, it's a bit painful to use. So there's little documentation. Most of it that you have is actually the examples, the distributed shell example. And it's always like pretty much boilerplate code. Every, every application master code that you look at, it's, yeah, almost the same. It's a bit, uh, it's a big piece of, of ceremony around, um, around everything. And yeah, also in most cases for you, it's not interesting that there's a resource manager and a node manager and how the interaction is. If you just wanna run an application on top of that, you just say, give me a container and notify me basically when something happens to the container, when it started, when it stopped and so on. Um, yeah, and then and, and this, uh, it's, it's also somehow harder to, to structure the code as, as uh, it imposes some, yeah, uh, some constraints on how, how you do, uh, how you handle it with, yeah. There are some solutions um, like uh, Twill, which is formerly known as Weave, um, that's, uh, yeah, the main focus there is if you wanna build something new, so um, it's, it's not really, or at least I didn't find anything in the documentation that lets you just run existing code easily. So the most examples really focus on, I wanna build something completely new or interact with some existing library, but basically the application part is what, what you would write new. So, um, and yeah, it's also some, somehow a bit rigid. Like it gives you all these components, but if you don't wanna use them, then you're, you're also out of luck and have to have to resort to the to the um, uh, underlying API again. So in case not everybody knows, the, the, the standard procedures here, like the, yeah, the, what I refer to it as ceremony is basically every application con uh, um, con uh, contains an application master that's basically managing the whole, uh, yeah, the whole runtime of the application. It uh, controls the containers and there's this class called AMRM client, so that's for communication between the application master and the resource manager. And first of all, you have to yeah, get this user information, serialize that in a special format, uh, tell the application master to use that uh, for, for authentication. Um, and then you have to specify all your resource requests and give it to the, uh, um, yeah, give it to the class and, 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 and um, say, allocate me these and these containers. And then you have to use the second class, the node manager client, which is there for the, uh, for the, for the communication with the node managers. And you always have to keep track of this um, um, application ID or, or the container ID actually um, that you use to identify which, which container you're actually addressing. So there's not, it's not that you just call a method on the node manager and this actually goes to this one node or the, it's not container based. So you have to have to keep track of the IDs. And then you enter the main loop. I think this one changed with a, with a more recent uh, Yarn API. I'm, I'm not really sure, but uh, with the 2.0 API at least, you then have this main loop where you constantly allocate or send empty allocation requests, which basically serve as heartbeat, but that's not really intuitive um, if, you, if you see the code. You don't really know what it does. So our idea was, well, we're using Akka quite a bit already. And um, first of all, what is Akka? So um, Akka is one implementation of the actor model. I'm not sure how, how familiar this is uh, here. Basically, I'll, 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 I'll keep the, to, the, to the Akka implementation actually. So your whole application is one actor system that contains actors, yeah. And each actor encapsulates state, 
and you only communicate via messages between actors. So you don't call methods that mutate the state directly. Every actor has a mailbox and then sequentially processes all messages. Um, when you get a message, you know which actor sent it to you. You can forward it to other, sender, uh, to other actors so that actually the sender reference is passed together with the message. You can uh, keep or uh, hold on to, to the reference of the sender and reply any time you want. So th th this, is, this is how you can model several patterns. Uh, you can even send actors a references. So you can say, tell another actor here, send this actor later a message. So it's, it, it's really, really versatile in that sense. And uh, what's not listed here, but what, what, what uh, also is practical in, in, in this uh, resource allocation phase is that you can actually model state machines using actors. So you can change the behavior of, a mess of, a, of, of an actor. If you, yeah, if you, get, if you get a message in and then what, what, what happens is that you can say, okay, now I change my behavior to something else. And then, uh, yeah, you, you basically just react differently to messages or you process messages that you, yet, that you couldn't process in the initial state. So also there you can um, yeah, easily, easily build uh, state machines out of that. There's also fault tolerance um, built in. So actors are hierarchical uh, and the parent can, can uh, basically watch the ch or gets notified if the children die or um, um, or, yeah, uh, actually the whole life cycle can be monitor monitored. So either if it dies or if, um, because, because an exception occurred or also if it was just stopped uh, on purpose. Um, so the hierarchical system works like this. You actually have a parent actor not in the root, but um, we'll skip that for now. So you, you create a child, it's automatically started. Um, you can configure what happens in the case of failure. So you can either stop the child, restart or resume it, or you can escalate up. So say some, some other actor has to deal with it. Um, in, the, in the API, you have some hooks uh, so that you can also inside the actor itself handle handle these cases. So you have a pre-start, pre-restart, post-stop. Um, and you can explicitly watch other actors. Um, where you, in, in, in that case, you also get a terminated or killed yeah, message from, from, from the, these. So graphically, it would, like it would look like this. So everything that resides under the user tree is uh, they are the actors that you can build, um, use yourself or create yourself, and the system part is managed by Akka itself. It's uh, it, it has some scheduling built in and um, some some other features where where actors are used, and that part is yeah basically not for you to touch. And in this example, you see this arrow here, so it's just that you can watch arbitrary other actors and, and react on their failures or, or life cycle changes. Um, so yeah, we're using that already. So first thing is, yeah, can we actually m create an actor system that models a YARN application, so the, the application master part? And of course, we can just use the async R YARN API and transform that into messages that are sent in, in, in the system. So. We have one actor that's called the application master, and <coughs> this basically contains the AMRM client and 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 um, performs all the actions upon upon the messages. So you can send this uh, this actor an allocation request message, and it will just perform the steps necessary. Um, in this case, you would get back so. Uh, maybe I'll explain a bit more in detail later, but um, we try to be a bit f more flexible on that side. So we said um, you can have custom routing. So you get a you get a response from from the application master actor once the container is allocated, um, and then you can have 
you can either have one actor that handles all the containers, you can have one actor per container, which makes it easily manageable. You can have groups of containers that actually are managed by one actor if, 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 if it's uh, a really simple application, for example. And um, yeah, basically this application master actor is just your gateway to the ARN API and you don't you don't interact with it directly. You, you can, so by extending this actor, you can also, um, of course, work with the API underlying API directly and extend the behavior, but uh, in general, it's just thought as, uh, in, in the simple cases at least, you just exchange messages with it and that's it. And uh, just like yeah, for, for new applications, we also build integration for Spray and Play, uh, which, which are, or Spray is a rather low level HTTP framework, which is also actor based and you can, um, you can easily model REST services with that and, and uh, that are, basic, yeah, are stateful. So if your application master has some yeah, stateful information there, then you can um, just encapsulate that in play, uh, in spray, and you can can use play if you have a bit more, yeah, uh, um, a, a bit richer um, a, uh, front end. So, because spray or spray doesn't have templating or something, so it's basically just serving files and giving you uh, either JSON data or whatever you want. Um, so yeah, as I said, um, the, the actors get the message, uh, you know, or yeah, uh, subscribe to the application master basically by sending this allocation request, and um, yeah, as, as soon as, as the resource manager replies, we get that, so, and um, we can also monitor the container actors directly in the uh, in the application master actors, so that you don't even need to provide more code to uh, to do that yourself. Um, or of, of course, this application master also handles or, or validates the resource request, so you can have exhaustive allocations that you try to allocate more uh, RAM that is that is available. Um, most of the times you will, in the current implementation, get timeouts though, because it's hard to check up front whether this, uh, this can, uh, or whether it can be fulfilled, the request, as uh, other containers may be started and stopped while you're performing the requests. So the standard way to handle this is really timeouts, which is quite common in, uh, in actors to, to have just a received timeout of after sending a message. Um, yeah, all these actors are used to guard the resources. So, um, what that means is just um, the life cycle of the resource that is guarded is coupled to the actor. So, if you um, if you just in your in your message handling code throw an exception, you just say what should happen in this case, and you do the you do the cleanup in the uh, rest pre restart or pre uh, post stop. Uh, hooks and um, that's 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 relatively easy to manage there. Um, then we for the node manager the same holds and this one also keeps track of your active containers for your application because as I said in the simple cases you don't really need to care about that once the containers stop uh, if there's no one actually handling those messages you don't really care but um, if you uh, want to stop the application as a whole, you want to have one instance that actually keeps track of all containers and gives you a, a method to, to cleanly shut down everything. And it, yeah, all the message dispatching also has to happen there because no one else knows. Um, in the asynchronous API, you get this, you get this container ID and you have to dispatch it to the actor that actually allocated that container. Um, and that's also happening there. And um, yeah, as I said, you can optionally also say that, that you can um, uh, that you can uh, monitor the life cycle and uh, it's, it's hierarchical in that sense that we, that the application master actor is a parent of the node manager actor and 
uh, also handles, handles failures in that case. So what you can you actually build on top of that? So that's good. You have a smaller, smaller code base if you use that. And for, for really easy programs, you can have something like blueprints where basically e executing your program is just a ma matter of configuration. You don't have to really write code yourself. Um, in, in Scala, you have this integrated Hocon configuration format that's uh, basically a, a superset of JSON. So it's, uh, you see an example in the, in the bottom there. Um, so yeah, basically you have one actor that is configured with this configuration and it will just create the messages and send them to the application master and your application is executed. This is just an excerpt uh, you can uh, actually have, have more uh, detailed configuration there, but in this case we just basically, first we define the commands that ha uh, should be executed, so in this case we just, uh, yeah, basically have an application that contains a lib folder and all uh, jars in there. Uh, actually, there's a star missing, but okay. Um, you say you want two containers, it should be retried once, uh, so yeah. That's really retries here, it's not tries, so it's, it's, if it fails, it's restarted once. And then you can also provide the resource mapping for Yarn. The way this works in Yarn is uh, you have basically files and archives that you can give as local resources and they are downloaded to the, um, to the node that executes that or Hope, hopefully they're also already locally inside that. So in this case, we just take the packaged application, unpack it at the root path of the, of the working directory, and then execute this command. Um, so another more compelling use case there is, um, I don't know if any, uh, any of you is uh, using Elasticsearch and Kibana here, yeah, some, some people nodding. So. Uh, Kibana is a nice, nice uh, in interface for visualizing, um, yeah, basically the data you have in Elasticsearch index. You can uh, perform grouping and and uh, counting and 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 actually it's extensible, so you can do whatever you want and somehow visualize it. So. It's pure HTML and JavaScript, so you can even extend with modules. And um, it's, it's a, nice, a nice way of exploring your data. So um, what we did for this is, a, yeah, we created just an app, uh, application master UI that serves you the static HTML and JavaScript files. Um, and these directly talk to the application master itself. Um, and this this application master is like yeah also joins the uh, joins the cluster in this case the the, the Elasticsearch cluster. It ju it's just a coordinator, so it doesn't hold any data. That's all on the uh, on on the nodes inside the cluster, or I mean, yeah, um, on the on the, on the con uh, inside the containers, and um, yeah. The REST request then just go against this, 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 this application master, and uh, everything is fetched from the nodes via Elasticsearch. So um, the way we used that, or we didn't do everything here, but it's, uh, there, there are several things that you can do with that. So you can, for example, index your uh, data, the data you're interested in, and have synonym detection, you can of course just analyze your log files um, if, if, if it's, yeah, just an initial overview how uh, over your, your logs you can before you start throwing MapReduce at it just explore the log files via, via Kibana. Um, yeah, then you can have some data, uh, um, data refinement, so sometimes you have for example, stop words that are context sensitive. So is it, it's either the language or if you have free text like job postings, for example, some words are irrelevant and can be removed. So we can just 
explore the data and see what are good candidates for the stop words. And another thing that we want to try out in the future, because we're currently still on, on Elasticsearch 0 0.90, but in 1.0 it will enable us to also, um, um, yeah, it, it includes basically a snapshot functionality where you can dump your whole index to HDFS. And, um, and then you could do yeah, many, many things like, for example, explore the live data, but on an offline cluster. So if you don't want to, uh, don't want to harm the, the live system, but still want to have fresh data, you can just dump the whole, whole uh, search index to HDFS and load it up again in the cluster. So that is something that is really tempting. A few words on the development environment. So Scala has this SPT um, tool, uh, build tool. It was once called Simple Build Tool, but they renamed that to Scala Build Tool for obvious reasons. And we can directly deploy from SPT to, uh, to HDFS now. That's just uh, a yarn deploy, and then it will automatically via web HDFS deploy uh, the whole application. Um, it is configurable, but uh, by default you will just set the replication factor to the number of nodes so that you have the application local on every on every uh, on every node. And um, there's uh, there's this SPT native for packager pl uh, plugin that's that's um, there's something similar in Maven. I don't I don't know what it's called, but it's uh, basically. Um, just taking taking your application, bundling it, you just define the main class and it generates all the scripts you need. And yeah, with this and the blueprints together, you can easily start your application afterwards also. Uh, one idea for the future would be to have a yeah, Maven or Ivy-like repository structure there so that you don't need to redeploy everything and um, just yeah, just basically the one updated jar and, and you're fine. Um, and of course this would mean that launching the application is a bit more difficult because you have to dynamically assemble the class path from these paths again. And that's, uh, that, that could be a bit tricky. And if we have that, then it uh, might be idea to think about a Maven wagon. That just, uh, it's just the way Maven publishes the jars um, but we have to have to evaluate that because we are of course creating some some smaller files and if you even publish snapshots that could not yeah be very intelligent to do. Um, there are some things that we still need for the future. So for example, the per persistent state for the applications. If, if your application master crashes now, you're basically out of luck. So um, the MapReduce code, I guess, it, it contains uh, s contains this, yeah, um, automatically re uh, or re connect or re reinstantiating the, the application mass uh, um, via. I think it's via HDFS. I'm not sure. But then you can actually recover and say, oh, all these containers are actually mine. And that's something that we would have to implement on top of that. Because currently, yeah, the, it's, it's a bit fragile if you want to use it for longer running applications. Um, then we have, um, yeah, if we run ACA cluster, which is uh, basically, yeah, you, ha you can have remote actor systems with, with ACA cluster. Um, and we have also Elasticsearch, with us, which also has its own discovery mechanism, but we know everything about the cluster inside the application master, so it would actually be nice to I integrate or have a pluggable discovery system on top of that um, for, for these components. Security is currently not implemented. Um, that would probably also make the configuration tricky, uh, trickier. And one another another thing that we would like to have ready is is a better integration with Spray or um, so that you can just say, OK, 
okay, I put some JavaScript files also here and then have this standard bootstrap based UI um, where you can do some more fancy stuff in the application master UI. Uh, yeah, that's that. That's what we are currently, uh, what we currently have. Um, the question here is also uh, whether or not it would be interesting for for you to have something like this. So we we're thinking about open sourcing it. There's still some some work to do, but yeah, that's actually one of the questions that I have, and then I'll let you have yours. Yes. Sorry? Yeah, uh, it's a bit difficult now because uh, they're conceptually a bit different. I mean, there you would pull in all, all uh, Akka as a dependency, and um, um, if you just write, I mean, okay, Akka also has a Java API, so you could also uh, basically have a Java example that uses that, um, but. I also see the distributed shell example as an example when you really want to use the, the Yarn API because that's the only simple example that I found uh, where you can actually see how does it work, so what are the first steps. And, uh, especially because it's quite tricky to, to get the order right uh, you, where you perform the operations there, so some, some things uh, are not really intuitive, and uh, there you really take then distributed shell, or if you take some, make something more complex, then uh, the Hoya application masters or uh, the MapReduce application masters as a blueprint for what you are doing. But that yeah, currently really leads to basically copy pasting all that code and uh, not knowing what it does. So. Um, Any other, it's not it's not restricted uh, restricted to to Akka applications. You can run any Java application you want. So we are. Uh, the actual model is only used in the management part. So it's only for make your management of the containers easier. So that you basically have. It's just a just a technique for having. Um, for having more modularity in your system, because one uh, you can say, okay, the handling of, of this is quite uh, quite difficult. So if, if this container dies, I will have to do more than just restart it. And then you can say, okay, I have one actor that is only responsible for this one container because. It's yeah, it's an alternate API and. It Provides some basic management fun functionality that you can use out of the box. So, um, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Not a. I, I don't think it's for deployment. I mean, the Hadoop plugin is really, as far as I read, uh, it's it's mostly for. Um, yeah, yeah. So this, what this plugin does. Uh, so yeah, that's also what I know that you can actually uh, configure your uh, uh, cluster to have this backup URL, which then points to the HDFS, and then you can say, okay, now load this index from that backup. Um, but it's not for provisioning it or or running it onto. No, no. I mean, you, you don't even for for using this uh, Hadoop plugin, you don't even have to run it on a Hadoop cluster. That's just uh, one of the storage backends they they uh, provide there. I think with the other ones were S3, and there's a, there's another one, one local f local version also, but uh, a third remote uh, that I that I don't know. No, but uh, for for automatically starting it, I don't know of anything that exists there yet. 
Yes. Um, well, no, no, no. I mean, uh, that's just for the for the uh, for the management part. So, uh, Akka is only used for the ma um, for the management part. So. It's only for the application master. You don't have to run it uh, to add it to your application itself. So, it's uh, yeah, that's only only running on the application master. So, mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. I mean, even even with, with one problem that you have with Scala that you have different versions that even also doesn't matter. So on your on your in your containers, you can even have a. a it depends how complex it is. If it's just uh, start them and they will eventually stop, and I don't care, then a configuration file is enough. Okay. Um, it's uh, the, the, there. You can have the the, the retries. Uh, I don't think that we currently have an unlimited retry, um, but um, and the current stage, at least, I'm also not sure if that's uh, yeah the best thing to do that because you could just run out of containers on your yarn cluster. So if something else runs. Gets started. It's, it's in a queue. Your application crashes, and uh, then you will not be able to recover that easily. So, yeah, oh, oh, good. Yeah, okay. You can have several separate queues, but yeah, yeah. But uh, managing uh, for, for at, at least, as I said, this application, uh, this fr uh, I would not currently. Uh, recommend that because there, I think yeah, we need to to also handle that. But the idea was to support that at some point. So. Apache slider. You also had a question? Uh, yes, about deployment. And you might have answered this with Chris when you were up there. I was, I was wondering if if you were uh, bumping the welcome policy to a Swiss client or a Swiss deployment that you're doing to help you with deployment. Um, yes, we're currently doing that. But that was why we say we want to have a Maven like structure there. So that we really only, you know, if we, especially if you're using Play, that can become ridiculously large because it, it has so many dependencies. And uh, I think we have sometimes 60 megabyte archives there that are. And yeah, that, that's why the idea is to actually have basically a, the Maven like directory structure and then. Assemble a class path because that would also cut down deployment times dramatically. Uh, no, I just said if you, I mean, yeah, the, between applications, they are isolated anyway, so that doesn't matter. But um, I just wanted to make clear that the application master doesn't have to ha run the same Scala version as your um, as your containers do. So yeah. that's. Uh, you're not restricted on what you're running there. So, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a Scala application. You can even 
yeah, run Elasticsearch some native application. That's that's also possible. Yeah. Uh, so I'm wondering if you would benefit from a um, web classification that covers all the different That especially for, for, for these yarn deployments, it would make sense actually, yeah. The, the basic use case is currently uh, the Elasticsearch one. Uh, for, for, for the other use cases, we didn't do really much with it currently, I have to say. Um, but we're definitely, we'll also will look into the load generation one because uh, that's, that's uh, it's just easy to use also your free resources to just generate some, some load to other, other nodes. And um, for the, um, the integration testing part also is not really dramatic because we're mostly running virtualized hardware for the services, so it's also quite quick to uh, to uh, set up a, a new virtual machine and run it there, but it could be that you in parallel want to test that somewhere else. So uh, it is currently possible, but we, we are not making really much use out of it currently, so yeah. Um, well, then you would just manually install on some machines Elasticsearch, configure it there, and uh, run it, and yeah, either, well, most of the time probably you would directly write the index from the Hadoop cluster to these nodes and hope that they can handle that, and um, yeah, that's that's how we would do it before, but I mean also, also creating indexes is now Quite easy. We, we we didn't really do that because we have yeah we're, we're behind 1.0 in, in in production. So uh, in the future that could be also one great use case there that we just on the cluster generate the index, uh, throw it into HGFS and then say on the on the production uh, Elasticsearch cluster just pull that pull that in. But now I forgot who actually asked the best question. 